Welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George and our co-host Nomi isn't here today so we're going to um, basically demonstrate, prove that um, our wills are causal by looking at the issue in real time. We're going to like look at what, what's happening right now, you know, and preceding this show and all. So we're going to start out with the idea that I'm sitting here alone doing a show when, um, when the plan was to do it with my co-host and have some guests on and all. And, but things happened. My co-host, um, you know, basically, um, despite his, um, you know, genuine, very strong desire to tape, because, I mean, he's really into it, and I can't wait till, you know, we start doing shows together, because it's going to be awesome. Despite his, um, you know, willing to be here, things happened that he wasn't in control of, that, um, you know, that will, um, that have prevented that. So anyway, so I'm here on my own, and um, and naturally I wouldn't have freely will this. You know, I would prefer to, to do a show with someone else. And, and so then, why am I here um, on my own? I could have, I could have canceled the show. I mean, or canceled the the, the taping. I mean, I, I think I could have. Um, I could have attempted, but you know, like there, what 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 stuck in my mind, what came to my mind is this idea that, um, you know, the show must go on. <laughs> the show must go on. So, so, um, and that was very, you know, it was, it was important to me that, you know, it was taped. Um, it's kind of like professionalism. And so, so here's the idea, like, you know, how did I, um, it could have been, <clears throat> it could have been that I never had heard that expression, the show must go on. And it could have been that um, that I didn't have the kind of views of of seeing that it, it would be a professional thing to do to, to to do these shows and and you know not to to cancel the tapings okay and and this is this is you know these things are I you know I mean if I had a free will yeah I, I would be um, a completely perfectly good person you know very professional very whatever but but I know that um, that um, I can't be that way because I don't have a free will, and I guess I feel fortunate that um, that somehow in my upbringing, um, either through my genetics, probably more environmental in this case, I came to believe in professionalism in, in the idea of just or somewhat professionalism. Well, actually, the <laughs> professionalism in certain aspects. I mean, um, no, no. I was going to say that. Um, Basically, what, what this show is going to be geared toward is, um, is um, college audiences. I want to, like, export these episodes to college cable TV stations across the, the country and hopefully across the, the world. So that, you know, that might explain my, my T-shirt and jeans and stuff inst instead of a tie j and jacket. This is kind of like we're trying to break uh, a mold here and trying to appeal to, to younger people. So... Um, all right, so we're, we're going to prove, we're going to demonstrate in real time that at least I, and certainly you, don't have a free will. Okay. Um, yeah, and I did this last episode. I did this in another episode. I'm not sure um, where, how these episodes are going to be presented with, um, in relation to each other. But on another episode, we just went through the idea that... Um, that these um, these thoughts just came in to come into our minds, you know. Like before I say something, I have absolutely no idea what it is that I'm going to say. And think about that. Think about that. Like you know, you um, you know, throughout our days, we're saying stuff all the time. We're thinking stuff all the time, and they're just these thoughts, these things we say are just coming into our head. <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, okay, let's focus on the real-time aspect. Again, um, I want to make it as easy as possible for you to appreciate the uh, significance of this topic, of this question, whether human beings have a free will or not. And I want you to understand that, that we don't have a free will you know, I want you to understand um, 
based on the science on whatever. For this episode, I want you to understand that I'm based on a real-time analysis of what's going on. Now, if I had a free will, um, I would guess that I would be choosing words that, that might explain this far better. I mean, I have, I have relatively good communication skills, explanatory skills and all, but, you know, certainly to my estimation, they're not nearly as good as they would be if I had a free will, if, if I could just like, um, you know, basically will myself to think and say whatever I wanted. Um, but I don't have a free will. Just give me a lot more camera changes, or it just makes it a lot more interesting for me. Thanks. Um, so, um, so that's that's the idea. And and like then you might say to yourself, yourself, well, you know, you could if you wanted to um, improve your presentation skills, so you'd be much better. And yeah, granted, but but you know, for whatever reason. Um, either I think that the presentation skills are, are good enough or, or there's something preventing me from, from enhancing, improving my presentation skills. Um, and let me tell you something, I've, I've done television for like, you know, four years you know, of TV shows. So, so this isn't something that, that's new. I, you know, I, I understand <laughs> my, my, um, my strengths, my limitations in this. And, and that, um, that basically, um, whoa, <laughs> that basically, um, makes it, all right, all right, we're going to go, this is real time, okay, when I, um, when I instructed the director to have more camera changes, I thought it'd be a good thing for the show, and, and maybe it will be, I think it will be, but then I, I noticed also that, like, um, when the camera changes, and I'm in mid-thought, um, then that, that might have a tendency to distract me. And, and that's actually what happened. I lost my train of thought when the camera changed. Now, if I had a free will, okay, that's good. I'm getting because if I had a free will, I would not have lost my train of thought. Okay, so this is, you know, we're explaining in real time how we don't have a free will. You know, the director's um, act caused me... Um, you know, and, and again, you're, you're, it's not like I'm, you know, um, I, I instructed the director to give me a lot more changes, and I was, that's good. But the idea is like, it's the, um, it's someone else's action that, um, that resulted in the thoughts or lack of them that I was having, you know, that in, in this case, uh, very specifically, of my having lost my train of thought. And so, I mean, like, let's get right into the, um, the benefits of understanding um, or that, that our wills are, are causal instead of free will. You know, if I believed in a free will, I might be tempted to say, oh, man, you know, this, you know, I might be angry at the director for, for having made, you know, the change when he or she did, because I'm not sure who's directing this. And, um, and but like, you know, understanding that, 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 that they, that I, we all have causal wills, um, makes it easy to to not blame or hold the other person responsible or or hold myself responsible you know and that could be such a godsend that could be such a um a wonderful perspective to um from which to view reality um okay so again we're going to we're going to look for ways to um to demonstrate in real time why um, why we don't have a free will. Okay, um, right now, perfect example, perfect example. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I want to say next, what I want to talk about next. And this thought just came to me. You know, when, when I realized that I didn't know what I wanted to say next, I realized that I could talk about not wanting to say next and use it as an example of how we don't have a free will. So, so that's what we're doing. And the thought just came to me. Okay, while I was like thinking, what am I going to say? This thought just came to me from who knows where. You know, I mean, like, you could say that it came from, all right, let's say you say it came from my mind, from me, okay? But think about it. Um, why couldn't I think of something else to say except for the fact that I didn't, you know, couldn't think of something to say? 
Why couldn't I do that? Because I don't have a free will. You know, having a free will means just being able to think and say and do whatever you want, you know, within kind of like certain parameters. Like, you know, having a free will doesn't mean that we can fly, you know, without an airplane or something um, because, you know, because of other reasons, you know, physical laws that prevent that, gravity and all. But, but in terms of our decisions, in terms of what we say, what we think, what we feel, um, yeah, I mean, the reality is that, you know, we can't do that. We can't do that. All right, I'm going to go into, I just like, a thought just came into my mind. Uh, we've been thinking about thoughts. Let's talk about feelings. Okay, so um, let's see. In terms of feelings, how am I feeling? I, I'm a little cold. If you guys could turn up the heat a little more, that'd be cool. Because uh, when I get cold, I got to start. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's very cold. I'm I'm, I'm almost shivering. Um, so um, and again, the, the perfect example. Let's let's put the feelings thing aside. Temperature. You know, temperature, somebody else is controlling the temperature in this room. I feel a little cold. Uh, the coldness makes me a little nervous. That's going to affect the presentation. That's all right. Uh, if it wasn't the person with the, with the um, you know, with air conditioning switch, it'd be something else. It could be like, for example, today, it's, it, it's, um, it's overcast. It's, um, I think it drizzled a little today, this morning. You know, it's like threatening terrain. And that affects our mood. That affects how we feel. That's going to affect this show. And so, like, if I'm not in control of either the weather or, you know, how high or low a person sets a, a thermostat in this room, then I'm not in control of, my, um, of things that are impacting what I say and how I say it and, and all this. So that's a good way of, of, uh, of understanding why, you know, why... Um, really what we do and think and feel is really not up to us. It's up to everything. All right, we're going to get into something really cool. Um, in Buddhism, there's this idea that there's no real individual self, that um, the, the individual self is an illusion. And uh, when you think about it, it's true. Because what's happening is like, you know, we have these physical bodies okay but they are influenced by the temperature by the light by the atmosphere by other people by so many factors outside of us and um so then what the reality is the uh the more accurate reality is that um we are everything it's like you know we are completely connected to everything else in other words there, there's no separation between me and this chair and this set and, and the people in, in the um in the director's um booth and and people outside and all we are all completely connected and that's um that's the way the universe is okay um and we have to be that way because you know influences are constantly inputting us from the outside and we're constantly inputting um, things outside of us you know it's a one so um, now I this could lead into an explanation of how um, the state of the universe compels everything but I'm not I don't want to get into that right now that's going to be for another show I'm going to stay on point and um, and address in real time why um, why we don't have a free will. Okay. Um, basic. Um, all right. We, we, we can um, go through moods, I guess. Um, amount of sleep. Amount of sleep. Okay. Um, last night I got good sleep. I mean, I knew I was going to do, you know, four shows, tape four shows on my own, and I knew it was going to be difficult, and I knew that, um, that, um, that I wanted to be, you know, as, as lucid and sharp as possible, and I knew that that would happen best if I had a good amount of sleep, so, you know, I, I made sure to go to sleep early last night, and when I got a late night call, I got off really quickly, so I wouldn't, like, stress myself, um, but notwithstanding, um, 
the amount of sleep I got last night is affecting how my presentation is today. Okay, it's much more energetic um, than it would have been if I got hardly any, any sleep. I mean, who knows what other kinds of um, changes would have come about. So that's another thing. What's happening today was, is directly related to that. Um, I chose, for better or worse, not to eat um, breakfast this morning. You know, because my stomach is a little tight, you know, and I, I had a cup of tea, but I didn't think, you know, um, you know, food would, um, would benefit this. I could have been wrong. I don't know. It's hard to say. But, but you know, clearly anybody who, who like has breakfast every day or who has breakfast some days but doesn't have breakfast other days can tell you that, um, that whether you have food or not in you will make a difference. And again, it's hard to say sometimes whether that difference is going to be better or worse. I'm, I'm predicting, I'm hoping that it's better for this show. But, um, but, but, you know, the point that I'm trying to make is that, yeah, you know, whether or not we eat food and what kind of food I would have eaten for breakfast would have, would have made a difference. Um, how much sleep I got, how I'm dressed. Okay, if, if I was like dressed in a um, tie and jacket, if my audience, if my main audi audience wasn't going to be high school kids, I'd probably have um, gotten a haircut, you know, um, just, I'd be talking differently probably, just like, this would be like a, a different presentation. Um, so, so it's the fact, for example, it's the fact that, um, that I have a certain audience in mind, you know, as the, the, the main audience that, um, that causes me to dress in a certain way and wear my hair in a certain way and all, that causes then me to act in a certain way, okay? Now, then you might ask, well, all right, well, how about this um, wanting, you know, high, uh, college kids as your primary audience? You know, some people might say, well, you freely decided that. You freely willed that. But did I? Did I? Think about it. Um, the reason I decided on college kids as the primary audience is, one, I'm aware that um, a lot of college stations throughout the country, a lot of colleges, universities, have their own cable station, you know, on campus that they... Um, you know, present to the students and maybe even to the community. And, you know, I know a lot of times they're looking for shows. Sometimes they don't have enough programming. So, so I know these two things. And I know also that college kids are curious about this stuff. They're, they're, you know, they take philosophy courses. Their minds are open to new ideas. So I knew, I knew this too. So basically, you know, my knowing something about college TV stations and about college kids kind of like, made it make sense, made it make sense to me that college kids should be the primary audience, okay? And that, so like, you know, is that a free will decision? No, because we are compelled, we're compelled by nature to, to do what we think is going to make the most sense. If I think college kids are going to be the best audience, the best way to disseminate this information, um, am I going to then tailor this this show to to four-year-olds or, or or 90 year olds no no you know we are compelled by nature to always do what makes them the, the most sense to us that's the thing and so like now here's the thing I, I, sometimes we'll look back in hindsight and say to ourselves well you know it seemed like the best option at the time but but you know knowing now what we didn't apparently know know then it wasn't the best option. No, or, or who knows, maybe it was still. I don't know. But that's the idea. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, proving in real time that, um, that we don't have a free will. It's really amazing. I'm, right now, you know, I want to I wanna take a few minutes to just, like, you know, savor that, that, um, that realization that this is a movie. I mean, what I'm doing right now, people, is compelled, completely compelled. None of it is up to me. I'm like, I'm an actor who's, who's like, 
whose every word has been scripted, every gesture has been scripted, every feeling has been scripted. You know, the whole, my whole presentation has been scripted by the causal past. Okay, and that is, that is amazing. That's awesome. Um, how do we, how do we understand this? Because I, I feel, you know, we've, we've done it enough of the uh, explaining how we don't have a free will in real time. So I want to just like go a bit through what this means, you know, what this means uh, in a more um, general perspective. Okay. One way you might be able to understand this or, or you know, understand its significance is like if you're religious, um, chances are you believe that, um, that God is all powerful or th that what he says goes. In other words, like if God wants you to do something, if God very genuinely wants you to do something, you're absolutely going to do it. You know, if God doesn't want you to, because like he's got the power, you know, you, you think you can actually do something that God, um, you know, is going to prevent you from doing or wants to prevent you? No. Uh, <laughs> because, all right, then, then I've got to answer the, the, the objection some people might have that, um, about God. And, and we're going to get into this more, but the idea is like, well, if God is all powerful, then certainly he can give you a free will, you know, but that that statement is incoherent and i'll tell you why like for example let's let's look at another question um can god can god create um a boulder so large that even he can't she he can't lift it you know think about that when you think about that question then you understand that this whole idea of, of an all-powerful God um, doesn't, doesn't stand up to reason. And then what, what, you, what, you end, what you end up concluding, which is just like, you know, it's a complete mind blower in another sense, is that it could be that God is completely compelled, that God doesn't have a free will either. Think about this. Think about this question. Can God, if, he, if she, he so chose, choose to cease, cease existing, you know, um, to just like cease existing along with the rest of the universe that God created, the rest of reality? Um, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> the idea is, that, um, all right, if there is, and here's, you know, let's put this, let's bring this together. If the, God is all-powerful, okay, then there's absolutely no way that we have any power at all. And if he's granting us free will, um, well, there's so much, again, that, that goes against that anyhow. But um, think about if he were to grant us a free will, then God couldn't be all-powerful. Think about it, because, like, if we're doing stuff that he would rather that we didn't do, and he's powerless to, to prevent us, that's not all-powerful. That's not omnip omnipotent. No. So, all right, so um, that's a cool consideration uh, with God because, I'm, you know, there, there are several, well, we'll go into it later. Okay, um, back to real time. Um, well, let's, let's think of another explanation of why um, free will is an illusion and why we have causal wills. Um, okay. Okay, right now, right now, I'm trying to think of another way to explain it, but um, either my mind's tired or for some reason, it's not coming to me. I'm saying to myself, you know, gee, it'd be nice if I could, like, you know, explain it in a different way, but it's not coming to me. So, again, so we're exploring that, you know, the way decisions, the way speech comes in real time. And again, if it was up to me, if I had a free will, I would know exactly what to say. My memory would just scan. Because let me tell you something. I know this subject cold. It's, it's in there. But I just, I happen to like, um, my mind functions much better generally when it's um, interacting with another person, you know, on my own. And, and also, I wanted to do this without notes um, to be able to demonstrate this better, to be able to also kind of like delve 
more deeply into my um, unorganized thoughts and reality. Um, okay, so again, we don't have a free will, but um, what's good, what, what we can um, take home as really good is that um, we should have, all right, basically we're hardwired to seek pleasure and avoid pain, and everybody is, okay? So the idea is that because of that, you know, as each day goes by, as each month, each year, each generation, each era, eon, whatever, we're getting better as individuals and as a species at moving toward the good, moving toward the pleasure, moving away from the bad, moving away from the displeasure or pain. We're getting much better at that. So like, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we don't have a free will. And in fact, it's better that we don't because like, because if we weren't guided by this hedonic imperative to always seek pleasure and avoid pain and by this moral imperative to always try to do good, then, um, then we wouldn't, um, then it would be like haphazard. You know, it's, it's great to know that the universe has compelled us to, to have those basic motivations. Okay, that's a good place to end. So, all right, this is George for exploring the, uh, the illusion of free will. And um, I just want to say this show is going to, this series is going to be revolutionary. We're going to change the world with this because like, you know, there are times for our ideas and the idea for humanity to overcome and benefit hugely by overcoming the illusion of free will is here and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be excellent. I'll see you again soon.